Hello and welcome to Talking Books. I'm Jill de Villiers. In the world of business, diversity is highly advantageous. Not only does it meet policy requirements, but it has been shown to increase efficiency and it assists in appealing to a broader range of customers. On the other side, there is still a lot of discrimination. Why do people discriminate and on what basis? And how can this tendency to discriminate be overcome? Joining me now to discuss these issues is Devon Munsami, CEO of this ICHAF Training Institute, who has written the book Racism, Classism, Sexism and the Isms that Divide Us. Welcome Devon, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Jill. So tell me more about your company, what does that stand for? Well, the ICHAF Training Institute stands for the I Can Help Africa Training Institute. So we are a CETA accredited training provider and we go into corporate South Africa and we offer different types of training programs like learnerships and skills programs, customer service communication, and of course diversity and inclusion training. And how did this book come about? It was just not, didn't come just on a whim. No, absolutely not. I wish it were. It did <laughs> come about uh, on a whim, but it was a much longer process than that. Now, because I've been immersed into the training or the learning and development field for probably close to a decade, I noticed that in the last four to five years, more and more organizations were wanting us to deliver diversity and inclusion training sessions. I myself was a part of many different company interventions around diversity and inclusion. And at that point already, about five years ago, I realized that there's a massive gap around literature that would guide people in corporate South Africa and the general South African around how to manage diversity strategies and different inclusive mm -hmm. processes within organizations. So people realize that they have to di have diversity, but they don't know how to do it. Pretty much, yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what would happen is there's a lack of team cohesion. So people aren't necessarily integrated in the way that managers and executive teams would like them to be. And sometimes, even in more serious cases, we'll see evidence of racial tension within an organization. Those are all signs that we need a very open, transparent diversity discussion mm -hmm. to take place. But most of the time, it's more subtle prejudices that come across. Mm. Is that true? That is true. Subtle prejudices. Uh, and examples of these are, you know, simple you know, looking or just glancing over and possibly even making racial slurs and comments or even body shaming comments or colorism mm -hmm. or classism comments that we may not recognize as being offensive, whereas the other party may then take offense by the statement. Some of, us, some of these statements go unreported, so people within the HR structures will not eventually hear about it, but staff members have clandestine meetings about Joel, mm -hmm. about Devon, mm -hmm. and their attitude towards me mm -hmm. because I'm Indian, mm -hmm. because I'm African, because I'm female. And therein lies the problem, is we're not as vocal about it because we have policies and procedures, we're afraid for job losses, mm -hmm. but we do feel the tension. So very subtle, but it can exist. Mm -hmm. So you talk about this fear of job losses. You have mentioned an example in your book of this boss who just shouts at everyone. Mm. And people are afraid to stand up to him because they're not empowered. They don't feel empowered within themselves to do it. Mm. They feel threatened. They feel if they stand up to him, they're going to lose their job. Mm. Absolutely. And this we can see, and I'm sure if people uh, watching at home, some people may reconcile with this, with this journey or the story of that individual. And what makes it more difficult is if the, the boss is a demographic of another kind of person who's different mm -hmm. to me. So somebody from a different generation, somebody who's uh, maybe a different skin color, somebody who comes from a different heritage or background. So that coupled with the autocratic nature of leadership is a recipe for disaster, quite frankly. So I'm unable to, con I'm unable to discuss it with you. I'm unable to have a dialogue with you. I'm governed by a level of fear. And then I use um, superficial elements to try and justify why you are the way you are. Mm -hmm. Jill is white, therefore she treats me in this, this and this way. Mm -hmm. And then I'll again have that behind closed door meeting. We, we, and, and unfortunately, the behind closed door meeting doesn't get us anywhere in terms of conflict, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. It's just talking and it never resolves anything. Mm -hmm. So what do you recommend to your clients? Mm. 
I'd recommend, firstly, bringing teams within the into the training room, bringing different teams within the organization, coming into the training room and having a very real, open discussion around where we at currently in terms of our diversity plan, how inclusive are we, and what is our strategy going forward? How are we going to be seen as a business unit or an environment or a team that's completely inclusive, completely transparent, and, and ultimately have a mindset that's mobilized to move forward into the new generation? Because I can almost guarantee you, if we're not having those discussions, we are going to stagnate. And that could be suicide for just about any business. So what is one of its age? Is age a big problem in, in the business place? I would say so, yes. It is a big problem. So we're now seeing Generation Z. So forget Generation Y, Generation X, they're old news. So it's already, you know, Demi Lee, the beautiful Miss World, I think mm -hmm. last year, was, she's part of the Generation X, uh, the, 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 brand, the latest generation. And we'll see now that Generation Z is now entering into the workplace. And we've still got baby boomers who are sort of exiting. And we still have Y generation and X generation people within corporate se sectors. And sometimes there's a little bit of a divide in terms of how we see each other. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a level of thinking. You must remember we're living in an era where information and technology is at, at, at the fingertips. So you can imagine the average 13-year-old today, how aware and enlightened they are in terms of current affairs and things generally going around them in the world versus the 13-year-old from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then map it even further than that, another decade before that. And then we can come close to understanding the significant differences between mindset of the child, of the, of, of the newer generation person mm -hmm. versus somebody who's been um, you know, in the corporate sector for 20, 30 years. And you say that the, the babies of today, the generation A, they are the ones we should really be concerned about? Absolutely, absolutely. We're going to be seeing so much movement in, chain, uh, in terms of, of, of um, IT and infrastructure. We're going to be seeing the globe becoming a lot smaller. The way in which I'm engaging with you now, I'm going to have to engage with somebody from France in the same way, somebody from China. The world is becoming increasingly smaller. The latest, the newer generations are those people who are really the ones connecting the world in that way. Mm -hmm. If we do not educate and guide in terms of how to be socially cohesive with people all around the world, unfortunately, you're preventing yourself from growing and possibly even sustaining big business. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's look at race mm -hmm. as, as, as another thing. Um, mm -hmm. That is also uh, a problem at, mm. at, the, at work. Do you think that over the past 10 or 20 years things have changed and that we've uh, begun to see other races uh, more openly? Mm -hmm. Yes, there has certainly been changes, some for the better and some for the worse. Now people like Vicky Momberg and Penny Sparrow and the guy on the Greek island, they seemingly have done nothing for any level of <laughs> racial integration. <laughs> and what media tends to do is we hone in on that isolated incident, or we'll hone in, maybe not isolated, maybe others have had racial experiences like this, tense moments, but they'll hone in and this is what we remember. And then what happens is we have these clandestine meetings at the Bry amongst our friends, around fam with family members, and we go, you know, we, we knew, we know that person is probably, and this stimulates that level of discussion and dialogue. Mm -hmm. Is it a fair representation? Is racism just an African thing? Is racism just an Indian thing? Is it just a European or a white South African or an Africana mm. thing? It is not. It's a global thing. Mm. So it, we cannot label it and say that it just belongs to one particular demographic, but at the moment, people are engaging. So in, in that way, where we're saying all Africanas are, all Greeks are, mm -hmm. based on one person's testimony mm -hmm. from a beach on the Greek mm -hmm. islands, or based on on Vicky Momberg's use mm -hmm. or, or abuse of, of, of a terrible word. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we look at that as an example. And now more than ever, we're living in a very sensitive, sensitive environment and era within corporate South Africa, as well as at the mall, mm -hmm. as well as on the streets of Santon, 
We have to be so careful about what we're saying. And those are the changes that I'm referring to mm -hmm. that are so significant at the moment. Because even I'm feeling afraid to be completely, you know, sometimes you've got to cross your T's and you, and you dot your I's in so many different ways. And people in corporate just don't know what to say anymore. Mm -hmm. So how do we bridge that? How do we learn mm -hmm. what to do and what to say? Look, it's not so much a process that involves external or other people mm -hmm. in the team. Jill, it has to start with a conversation with myself. It has to, a lot of the times people work on, you know, will go in and do a diversity workshop and, and, and talk about the very topical things like, let's greet Dumelang or Assalamu Alaikum or Khoyomora. And maybe that'll make me a bit less of a racist than I was. But unfortunately, we may know how to greet in 10, 12 different languages, but I'm still fundamentally feeling a level of hesitation around engaging mm -hmm with somebody of a different race Because group. they're not the same as us. Because they're not the same as us. We need to dig a little bit deeper. So teaching people cultural characteristics is one thing, but I'm not convinced that this is the answer to figuring out how to, how to have a, race, uh, a, a strategy within the workplace or how to speak to the mm -hmm. self, really. That's like applying a rash medicine to maybe like a chest infection, if you had mm -hmm. to make an analogy. The first step would be having a serious conversation with the self and unpacking and understanding how I see people around me. Mm. What am I doing right now to be able to influence the perception of my children, my community members, my, the members at my church, and my family at large, and more importantly, my staff at work? How am I influencing, how am I engaging in dialogue with them that suggests that we all should move together as, as a people within this uh -huh. organization. Fantastic. Devin, thank you so much for coming in mm -hmm. and chatting to us about your book. Thank you, Jill. Thank you so much for having oh. me. So just to, to recap, my guest is Devin Munsami, the author of Racism, Classism, Sexism, and the Isms That Divide Us. And that was it for this edition of Talking Books. Thanks for watching and see you soon.